praise God. Those who are visiting with us, we want to say, keep coming, stay and remain a part of the house. Can we give the Lord a hand for them? Amen. Praise the God. You know, we've been in this servant series and I can't seem to find my way out of it. Every time I try to end it, God has given me another sermon. Because he wants to show us the, quali the qualities we should have as servants of God. Amen. Can somebody say, I'm a servant this morning? I'm yeah, I'm a servant of God. And you know, Paul goes forward, he says, I'm a slave of God. I'm a bond, bond servant, meaning I don't even have no rights. I don't even have any rights. So this morning, we're in another sermon and it's called Servants Affect. Servants Affect. And let's turn our Bibles to Matthew 5.13 and then we're going to go over to Luke 14.34. Matthew 13 says, You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing, but to be thrown out and trampled under foot by men. So therefore, who's on their feet? The devil, right? And he's no good. He's good for nothing. That's why he belongs under our feet. So the Lord is saying to us, we are the salt of the all right, let's go over to Luke and see what it says there. Luke 14, 34 says, salt is good. The doctor says salt is no good. But the word of God says salt is good. But if the salt has lost its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is neither fit for land nor for the dunghill. It's not even good for the trash can. But men throw it out. He who hears, uh, he who has ear, let him hear. Amen? Amen? Praise God. This morning God calls us salt. And the reason why he calls us salt is because salt has an effect. It affects its environment. Salt is able to affect. You know, as I was reading up on salt, it says salt has about 4,000 different uses besides seasoning meat. Besides flavoring food. You know, if you have some chicken and you're getting ready to cook it, what you do? If you don't have all the fancy seasons, you don't need them. All you do is put some salt on it and it's ready to cook. All you need is some salt. You try cooking chicken without salt and tell me how it tastes. There's some of us, because of health conditions, we are forced to eat food without salt. And you should see, if you give my kids food without salt, you should see the expression on their face. They're like, ugh, what is this? This is gross, this is yucky. And not only them, I say the same thing too. Because the word of God tells me that salt is good. And the reason why salt is so good the meat by itself, if you should eat meat cooked without salt, it's not tasty. The best meat, the best thing, you cook it without salt, it's not flavorful. But you put salt on that same meat, it penetrates that meat. It penetrates it and it's able to bring forth the flavor that is within the meat. The flavor is not in the salt. The flavor, let me say that again. The flavor is not in the salt. The flavor is in the meat. So what needs to hit the meat is salt. And Jesus calls you and I the salt of the earth. The flavor is in the earth. The flavor is in the people of the world. But what needs to hit them, it's you and I. That is why servants are called salt. Somebody needs to clap right there. God calls us salt. We have the ability to affect. Look at some. Why salt? Salt brings flavor. It enhances flavor. Salt preserves. You know, you get a piece of fish and you salt it really good. You put it out in the sun and you dry and then we all go to the store and we buy salt fish. How come the salt fish don't spoil? Because there is salt. 
You are the salt of the earth. You are here to preserve the earth. Because if we do not preserve the earth, guess what's going to happen? The earth will decay with sin. The earth will decay. There was a time when this happened. In, 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 in Noah's time, when the earth was decaying with sin, that the stench came up. Anybody ever smell rotten fish? Yeah. Anybody ever smell rotten shrimp? Yeah. But if it had some salt, it would never rot. It will never decay to that point where it brings forth a stench that you cannot stand it. You have no pleasure. You can't be around it. I remember growing up in Guyana, the garbage can, the, the, the dump, sorry, was right across our house. If you're from Guyana, from the Caribbean, I don't know the other, I shouldn't say the Caribbean, I should say Guyana. They used to have, uh, on each block, a, a place called, they have, we call it a rubbish bin or a, a rubbish heap where everyone brings their garbage and they throw it out there. And then the, the municipality will come around with a tractor and then they will scoop the garbage up and throw it in the truck and take it away. But we happen to live right across the dump. And it's a small thing where they're supposed to come every week or twice or three times a week and they pick up your trash and take it out. But people for some reason would bring the shrimp's head and throw it there. And the wind blows from the seaside to our house. So we get the blessing. Now, if they had salt down the head and then throw it, we wouldn't have to go through that. So salt refreshes. Salt preserves. Salt invigorates tired bodies. You know, if you're a hard worker and your feet, you know, they're tired, you come home and you soak it in some salt. Salt renews. Salt refreshes. Salt invigorates. Salt has the ability to kill. Yes. You get a cut and it's infected, you can put some salt in it and it will kill the bacteria that is in. So we have so much work to do in the earth church. We have the ability to kill the works of darkness, to kill the plans of Satan, to destroy the powers of the devil. It is time for us to affect. Affect through your prayers, affect through your worship, affect through your praise, affect through your lifestyle. Be the light, be salt. God has called us to be salt. I'm gonna give you one more practical one. Salt clears the way. When it snows, what do you put on the ground? Salt. Without the salt, the snow becomes ice. And you'll slip and fall and hurt yourself. So same with you and I. Let's take that and apply it now in the spiritual. We're able to clear the atmosphere. We're able to clear the path for people to walk through. Because the Bible says the devil is like a roaming lion. Walks about seeking whom he may devour. But your prayers, your declaration, your words of life clears path for people clears path so people can come to know Christ because the devil has blocked their ears blocked their hearts that they cannot receive but you and I have the ability to clear and make the way so many people are sliding down to hell people are sliding they go into hell people are dying day after day and they're going to a lost eternity but you and I have the ability as the salt of the earth take yourself serious for once you know they always say don't take yourself serious but to them to giving you permission to take yourself serious you are the salt it is time for the church to begin to affect your community for Christ don't just live and you know in America we live in this little house that we live in and all we concern is from my end, the end of my property to the next end and that's it you drive in you make sure you sweep your house you sweep in front of your house you clean your backyard you go in and out and that's it your neighbors are dying in sin but you wouldn't dare to tell them about Jesus and even better sometimes we live in apartments uh, where the wall separates you and you never stop to bind up the devil that's working on the other side you hear the family cussing and fighting and you pick up the phone hey Jane they're fighting again I don't know what to do with these people I'm gonna call the cops no call Jesus 
declare the name of Jesus. You are the salt. You have the ability to affect. The word of God said whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Bind up the spirit of confusion. Bind up the devil that's working in families to destroy them. You know what the enemy wants? For them to divorce. The enemy wants them to be broken. The enemy wants them to be miserable. The enemy wants the man to be hooked on some drug and get so messed up that the woman goes and finds another man. That's the plan of the devil. Steal, kill, destroy. But who is going to affect it? Not Jesus. Not Jesus. You and I. You know the parable in Luke? I think it's like Luke 14, 19. Where, where, where the, the, let me get it for you so I give you that scripture. I think it's Luke 14, Luke 19, 13. The master gave them uh, uh, talents. And he went on a journey and he told them, occupy until I come. Occupy until I come. Today Jesus is saying to his church, it is time for us to occupy Take up space. Go out. Go out and preach. Go out and share. Live a different life. Live a life that affects somebody. Don't just be worried about you and your four walls. Worry about your $10 in the bank. How you can make it $12. No. Begin to pray. Say, God, use me for your honor. Use me for your glory. God, help me to pray for someone. Help me to lift somebody up on the street. And they listen... The first time, you're not going to be able to talk to them. Can I tell you this? Amen. You're not going to be able to talk to Mr. Blue on the street. Because he's so hard. And he's put up all these big walls. And he's so tough. And he's on his phone. And he got his headphones in. But let me tell you simply what you do. When you see Mr. Blue, you give him a smile. Amen. When he walks by, he say, Then the next day, you give him a shake off. And he's like, who's this person affecting me? Watch, you see what you're doing there? Why is this person getting to me all of a sudden? This young lady is not supposed to say hi to me. She's supposed to think that I want to be with her. But here she is saying hi to me. Here she is saying hello. And much as the dude saying hello to another dude. Bro, you strange. Why are you saying hi to me? But we're affecting. You know who you are. When salt hit chicken, it flavors it. It don't question, should I flavor today? Hmm. Am I going to flavor today? Um, mm, imagine you go and you buy a, 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 a salt and the salt doesn't work. What are you going to do? You're going to either throw it out or you go back to the store and you say, this salt doesn't work. The Bible says, if the salt loses its ability to season, it is no good. It is no good. And one of the words they're losing flavor means, it's a word that's called insipid. To lack vigor. To lack vigor. Uh, tea meaning it's blonde. It is weak. It is thin. It, it is flavorless. It's wishy-washy. You want some wishy-washy salt or you want potent salt? You want to... Uh, 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 imagine you go to Costco and you buy the big salt and every time you got to cook, you got to pour the whole thing because it's weak. You don't want that salt again. It's loose. It's ability to affect. The Bible says if we lose... The ability to affect, we become watered down. One of the meanings of that word is watered down. We must guard against becoming watered down, church. You know how you become watered down? When you don't care if other people get saved. All it is, all you're doing now on a Sunday, and on Saturday, and on Friday, and on Wednesday, and on Tuesday and Monday, is thinking, what am I going to church next Sunday? All I'm concerned about is how I look. All I'm concerned about is, oh man, when I get my pay on, on Friday, I'm going to the mall. That's all I'm going to do. I'm going to the mall. You know, like for my birthday, I went to the mall. All you're thinking about is what can I go and buy and store for myself. The, the Lord said to the rich man that says that when he's, his harvest was big and, and he was enjoying life, he said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to break down this barn and I'm going to make a bigger barn. And I'm going to store my stuff and I, I'm going to have enough food and I'm going to have enough wealth and, and I'm going to live and I'm going to be merry and I'm going to cut my foot up and I'm going to be happy. And the Bible said that same night, the Lord said to him, you fool, you're going to die. Because he lost his ability to have an effect for God. He became selfish. He began to look only inward. What can he do for himself? The 
that is not what God called us to be. He said we're salt. Salt has to affect. Salt has to have an effect. Guard against becoming watered down, church. Guard against being selfish. Guard against your own desires. Sometimes we put our desires so high that we don't even say, God, what would you have me to do? When Saul, Saul now, not Saul. When Saul met with Christ on the road of Damascus and he hit the ground and he couldn't see, you know what he said? Lord, what would you have me to do? Lord, what would you have me to do? When last we asked God, what am I living for, Lord? What is my purpose? What is it you want to do in me? You say I'm salt, God, but I've not been affecting. I've not been having an effect on my family. I've not been having an effect on my surrounding. You know, we got to stop sometime and look and say, God, what's going on with me? Don't worry about the church. A lot of times we sit and we say, pastor's not doing this. And, and, and sister, this is not doing that. And blah, blah, blah. Well, what am I doing? Now I'm going to put it to you. What are you doing, church? When last have you been salt? When last have you affected your community for Christ? When last have you prayed for someone? When last have you prayed for your family members? Sometimes we're busy being salt outside, but at home we're salty. Nobody want to hang around us, meaning that's the bad part of being salt. We're too much for our own house. No. We got to guard against. The Bible says, if we be cold and lukewarm. Cold and lukewarm. He will spit us out of his mouth. Amen. He will spit us out of his mouth. Salt has the ability to swing things in the right direction. That same meat that you couldn't stand, you put a little salt in it and you're able to eat it. If somebody cook a meal and it doesn't taste really good, you ask them for some salt and it straightens that food and you're able to eat it. It's the same power God has given to you to swing things back in order. Your children are going out in order, you could spray them in line. Your husband is going out of order, you could pray them in line. If your boss is acting up, you have the ability because of Bible says, so what two shall agree and touch it, it shall be done. If you can't get it done by yourself, you got other brothers and sisters that you can call and swing things back in line. Amen. We got to be salt, church. Amen. We got to be salt. It is time for us to stand up and be salt and put things in order. Penetrate the darkness. If you look in the culture today, everything is out of order. The music is out of order. It's nasty. Well, as you listen to some good hip-hop, it's disgusting. Ain't no such thing as good hip-hop anymore. Amen. It is nasty music. Yeah. And it's penetrating the, not just young people. I like the young people penetrate the old people. Yeah. And they penetrate them so much that they give it to their young people. Yeah. They give it to their kids to listen to it. So if the parents are blind, the mom is blind, the puppy is blind, and the kids are blind, the Bible said the blind leads blind and they both end up in a ditch. Don't, don't. We have to be careful what it is we let into our minds because it's going to affect us. The eye is the light of the body. What you look at is going to mess with your mind and it's going to take up residence and it's going to sit there and it's going to play and it's going to play and it's going to replay and it's going to replay because you let it into your body. The body is the light. Amen? But we are called to penetrate the darkness. We are called to pray for our schools. We are called to evangelize our young people. It is time for us to stop inviting kids everywhere. Come, let's go to the movie. Come, let's go to the mall. Let's go here. Let's go there. But we're not telling them, let's go to church. The only thing that could give them eternal direction is the word of God. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by the word. If you didn't come to church this morning, you wouldn't know how much power you have, how much ability you have, and what God expects of you as sought to go out and make a difference. Jesus was sought. Because the Bible said wherever he went, he went doing good. He had compassion. He healed the sick. He raised the dead. He mended the broken heart. He reached out to the rejects of society. Jesus, what? Jesus had a whole bunch of rejects with him. 
But we want to hang out with the big classy people. We want to hang out with those that are high up in society that we who are nobodies look like somebody. Yeah. We don't desire to walk with God. We don't desire to follow Jesus. We desire to look cool. You know somebody with a nice car, you want to make sure you get a ride in that person's car because it makes you look stush. No, little things, little things, little things. But Jesus was hanging out with all the rejects. Nobody likes a fisherman. Nobody wants to hang out with Peter and James and John. They're fishermen. Everybody wants to hang out with people with good money, people that are high up in society. But Jesus went and he affected those men. And those men went with the gospel. They were passionate. When Peter said, man, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. He said, listen to me, Peter. Nobody told you that. But my father, which is in heaven. And they turned the world upside down. All the good things were enjoying in this western hemisphere is because the truth of Christ came forth. Look at it. Poverty is in the east. Eastern countries suffer from grave poverty. In this part of the world there is blessings because the gospel is prominent here. The gospel is prominent here. The Caribbean, the gospel is prominent. We come from Guyana. We don't know what it is to miss a meal. We didn't only come to America to eat food. We had food in Guyana too. Yeah, we had food. But in certain parts of the world, I, I saw some documentary in Bangladesh and in India where these women, they're sitting on the ground and their stove is right in front of them and they have a pan with some things like seeds, you know, like peas. And that's the meal they're preparing for their kids, a few peas. And they're just with some stick and they're just cooking that and that's what they're going to feed their kids. Jesus said to them, when you get into the land and you've eaten your full and you're satisfied, do not forget the Lord. Do not forget the Lord. Today we're so blessed. We're so, we, we, we have everything that we need. Everything that we need, we have. But what God expects of us, he came, he paid the price, he died, and now he's gone. The Bible says he go to prepare a place for us, that when we go, we will have our space in heaven. Amen? You're in this world, but you're not of this world. But he's saying, occupy until I come back. Uh, they said there's a time when the trumpet will sound, uh, and the dead and rise uh, shall raise from the grave. Uh, and those that are remain shall go to be with the Lord. And so shall we ever be. But until that time. We have to be the salt of the earth. Imagine if we go out and we start affecting our community. We start to share kindness. We'll dispel so much darkness. Just by with a smile. Just reaching out and giving somebody a fist bump and telling them it's going to be okay. Bringing hope. We are carriers of hope, church. We are carriers of hope. We, we don't go out and bring them gloom, doom and gloom. No, we're here to let people know that there is hope Amen. in Jesus. Amen. We are salt. We're going to bring light to the darkness. We're going to bring healing to the broken heart. We're going to bring Jesus to those that suffer from insecurity because we are salt. And we're going to affect our communities for the Lord. Amen. Let's not be watered down. You know why we can't be watered down? Because we're called a church. And the Bible said the church, the word for church is the ecclesia. You're called out of something and you're brought into something. We were called out of darkness into the marvelous light of Christ. We're no longer in darkness where we don't know what to do, where to go, what to turn, how to help. You know, some people say, uh, can you help this person? They go, I don't know. I don't know what to do. And you can't blame them because they're bound. But we have been called out. We know how to help. We know how to reach out. We don't know the people that we're sending toys to down in all, other, all these countries. But guess what? We are going to do it because we've been called out to affect we will never reach the kids, probably. The kids will never even see my face or your face. They may never even see this church. But we are affecting them for Christ. All the glory goes back to God. Amen? We're in this world. So we salt cannot become contaminated or it is useless. So one, make sure you, you guard against becoming watered down. 
losing the ability to affect. Amen? And you have to remain called out. He says, come out from among them, be separate. And I'll be a father unto you. When we take the step and we walk towards the Lord and we say no turning back. You know that's what repentance means. Forsaking the old way and go towards Christ. Amen? We ought to forsake the things that are behind and press forward in God. Make a decision. Make a conscious decision this week that you're going to go out and you're going to affect your community for the Lord. Amen? Because God doesn't want people that are watered down. He says, you are salt. It's time for you to affect. Think about, think about it. When should we be sought? When should we be sought? I want to swing it around to you and say, when should we not be sought? Hmm. Everybody wonders, when should I preach? When Jesus say, go preach. Everybody wonders, when we're going to pray? When the word of God says, pray without ceasing. Everybody says, when am I going to sing praises? When the Bible says, sing songs, hymns, spiritual songs. When are we going to heal the brokenhearted? The Bible said, go heal the brokenhearted. Set the captive free. So you're asking the question, Pastor, when can I be sold? What time of the day? I want to tell you every moment of the day. Every moment, 24 hours a day. When you wake up in the morning, you're salt. When you go to work, you're salt. When you go to school, kids, you're salt. When you're serving your husband dinner, you're salt. You're to affect him in a positive way. Yes. Don't hand in the plate. And say, hmm. When you're rubbing your wife's foot, you're salt. Don't go, oh God, not this feet again. It's always a good time to be the salt of the earth. Amen. It's always, Elijah was salt when people were rebellious to God. Moses was salt when he went and obeyed the Lord and delivered the people from Egypt. Esther was salt when she went in and said, if I perish, I perish. But I'm going to see the power of God manifested among my people. Gideon was salt when he was hiding and threshing out his, 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 um, his wheat because he was afraid that the enemy will come and steal it. He was salt. Samuel was salt when Saul was disobedient obedient Nehemiah was salt when he went and built a wall Haggai was salt when they forsook the house of God and they went on and lived their own lives and forsake the house of God Malachi was salt when the people were robbing God of his tithes and offerings it is always a good time to be salt when the worship team is up here worshiping they're salt when we're going out and we're doing outreach, we're saw. When we're on 241st and we're on 233rd and we're sharing tracks, we're saw. When you pick up the phone and you pray with a brother and sister, you're saw. When you give someone a smile, give someone a hug, give someone an embrace that they feel strength, you're saw. That is what God has called us to do. When you're going on missions and you're, you're sharing the gospel and you're giving into the house of God, you're saw. When you take your finances and you say, man, I'm not going to drink coffee this week. I'm going to give to the work of God. I'm going to go and buy some toys. I went to, um, to, to Dunkin' Donuts twice this week and I bought a latte and it was like $4 and something cents. Yeah, it used to be like two something. Yeah, now coffee is no longer dollar. You know, we always love dollar coffee. You can't find dollar coffee anymore. We lie. I used to like dollar coffee, okay? And when I go on different states, you see it for 69 cents. You love that stuff. McDonald's used to have it. They don't have it anymore. Who bought a dollar coffee from McDonald's lately? It's not there. There's no dollar coffee no more. If it's a dollar, it's probably the smallest cup they have. No. So we have to make sacrifices in every area of our life to be soft, to affect, to be conscious. Live out what God has called you to do. Live out. Think about it without the church. The world will have no flavor. Because there's no salt. The world will decay in sin. The truth of God is what preserves church. And the truth. Jesus said I am the way. The truth. It is Jesus that keeps things. If the church is not here. 
there will be a stench of sin. You think there is sin now? Let the church get removed. Let the church be removed and you're going to see what happens to the world. Mighty God. I want us to just consider this word today. And see what God is saying to us. I want to pray for some people. You're in this room and you're saying, Pastor, I want to be sought. I want to go out and affect my community. I want to be vibrant. I, I, I want to penetrate. I, I don't just want to be surface. Salt goes deep. Salt goes on to the bone. When, when you eat certain food and, and, and you get down to the bone and it starts to taste a little yucky. You're like, ooh, they didn't season this thing properly. I want you to think about this today and say, Lord, I want to affect deep. I want to affect my home first. I want to start at home in my Jerusalem. And then I want to go to Judea outside my house. And then I want to go to Samaria in my community. And then I want to go to the uttermost parts of the earth. I don't want to be limited, God. And if I can't go, God, uh, I'm going to give my money. I'm going to finance. Uh, I'm going to help things go forward. I'm going to be a part of what it is you're doing. Uh, because I'm so... And I don't want to be the watered down kind of salt. I don't want to be the kind of salt where they throw up and they're like, oh, no, no, no. We don't want that watered down salt. We don't want that blonde salt. We don't want that weak salt. I want a little bit of me when I show up. It must affect the place for good. Oh, great God. Let's all stand this morning in the house. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I pray this morning that God will challenge our heart to step up our salt. Let's be what it is God has called us to be this morning, church. God has just saved us and left us here. If there was no reason for us being on the earth, the moment we got saved, we would have went straight into heaven. The Bible says we are the salt of the earth. God wants us to affect our communities. He wants us to show forth His power. He wants us to show forth His goodness. He wants us to bring hope wherever we go. I want to be an agent. I want to be a, a, an agent that is powerful. That will penetrate the darkness for the kingdom of God. That will pray now, not my will, but your will be done. Almighty God, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Jesus said, when you pray, pray thy kingdom. Oh, Jesus. If you're here today, you, like pastor, I've not been doing a good job being salt. I can do better. I want to get stronger. Uh, I want to stand out for Christ. I want to penetrate the darkness. Uh, 